Hello everyone and welcome back to Jimmy Talks Jira. I've got a great topic for you this week. We're going to talk about best practices when it relates to Jira permissions. Uh, this is something that came in as a request on Twitter. It's also something I'm currently working on at my company and I have done this in the past. Uh, so I thought it would be a good topic to talk about in this video as well as cross post as a post on the Atlassian community. Without further ado, let's dive in. Okay, so for obvious reasons, I won't be able to show you my company's instance. Uh, that would be a massive security violation. And I should also point out that this won't be relevant to the free tier subscriptions of Jira Cloud instances, as the permissions feature is not enabled on that tier. If you watched my first video where we went through how to set up a standard plan instance for free uh, for certification uh, practice, um, that's what we're going to focus on here, and this will obviously work for anyone who has a company that's on either standard or premium or even enterprise. Um, so where we're going to start, let's talk about the why we're doing this. So the thing that I've wanted to do with these best practices is try and alleviate the amount of maintenance and overhead that you need to do of changing permissions going forward. So what we're doing with that is we're going to rip out as much as we can users and groups from the permission scheme. And we're going to try and only set users and groups within the uh, project people page itself. And we're only going to assign them to roles. Uh, in addition to that, I'm trying to assign just groups and not individual users. Uh, the purpose of this is that if you are using, say, a third party identity provider like um, Azure AD or Okta or uh, G Suite uh, through Atlassian Access and SSO is configured. What will what you'll be able to eventually get to is your identity provider can set up both the users and the groups, and you'll be able to sync those across to the point where if you only have project roles defined in the permissions scheme, and you only have groups defined in your projects. As people change departments, or new users join the company, or people leave the company, your identity team will keep those updated, which will sync across through Atlassian Access into Jira, and you shouldn't have to touch the permission scheme ever, and you shouldn't have to touch the people page unless there's a new group that needs to be added, or an existing group that needs to be removed. This sets you up so that you have mostly hands-off on permissions, unless there is something specific that you need to touch, which shouldn't be as often as new users joining, say, every couple of weeks or so. All right, with that, let's get in. Um, let's talk about the article that will go up on the community uh, in tandem with this. So where we're going to start with is setting up your project roles. Um, project roles are going to be sort of the, the de facto what you're going to want to use within the permission scheme. And... If you are brand new and you, you shouldn't have very many roles set up, if you've been around for a while, you might have quite a few roles. Roles are global to the instance. So in order to get there, you're going to go to the admin cog and you're going to click on system. And that's going to bring you here under security. You're going to click on project roles and that will bring you to this page here. Now, by default, um, since I have Jira service management installed on this instance, the administrators group the Atlassian add-ons project access, service desk customers, and the service desk team were already there. I added a developers and a users, which is from the old Jira software, if you were ever on Jira server, um, the administrators, developers, and users roles were sort of the standard ones that you would get. Add as many roles as you think it makes sense to have to uh, allow you the flexibility to assign permissions to individual roles. Um, that will allow you to give people the permissions they need to do their job without having to give them a role that gives them more permissions than they need. Um, I would highly recommend trying to set the roles to something that makes sense based on what permissions it's going to provide. So for the administrator's role, obviously I would expect that project administration is assigned as a part of this. If you were to say make a scrum master's role, uh, managing sprints, uh, would definitely be something you'd want in there. Um, just try and make it so that it's easy for people to figure out uh, the intention of the roles based on, or the intention of the permissions being provided based on the names of the roles. 
So the next thing we want to look at is setting up the permission schemes themselves. Um, so as I mentioned, I try and set up the scheme so that it has nothing but project roles. Uh, and that is because if you add groups and users into the permission scheme, only full Jira administrators are able to edit the permission schemes, which means you need to get a Jira administrator involved anytime that the scheme needs an update. If you delegate that out to the project administrators, they can make those changes to, on the people page to users and groups without having to get a Jira administrator involved. Um, so that just, it can reduce the bottleneck if you have um, sort of a few number of Jira admins and more project admins. If you are the only Jira administrator and the only project administrator because you work for a small company, um, I have been there and I can say that this is just a, enabling you for when you are larger um, to not have to run into that problem then. Um, so the more that you can help yourself now to make it easier for you in the future, uh, I strongly recommend doing that. Now, in the process of setting up the permission schemes, there are two uh, main ways to think about it. Neither one of these is the right way or the wrong way. They're both very good ways to think about things. Um, it just depends on how you think about permissions. Number one is the hierarchy, where the you'll have a low-level set of permissions, such as users, um, that has a hierarchy going into, say, developers and administrators, where the developers and administrators' roles contain everything below them. So developers contains all permissions that the users have, plus some additional permissions. And the administrators' role has additional permissions, but also contains everything that the developers' role and the users' role has. This is a great way to set things up, when you're using this in the configuration of the people on your project, you will generally only set your groups to have a single role, and that single role will be whatever level you want them at because they will automatically inherit, based on what you've set up uh, within the permission scheme, the permissions from the lower tiers. So if we take a quick look at what that's going to look like, um, you can see that I have some roles that are only set for the administrators. I have some that are only set for the administrators and the developers, and I have some that are set for all three. But if you look throughout the entire scheme, the administrator's role is assigned to every single permission, and then the developer's is assigned to a few more that the user's isn't, and then there are some permissions that all of them have. That's how you set up the, the hierarchy setup of things. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the other option, and that's the wrong page, is to set up uh, that you have separate roles for separate types of permissions. Um, so much like I said, if you had, say, an administrator's role, you might have it set up that the administrator's role only has project administration. And you might set up a scrum master's role that has managed sprints and the set um, uh, schedule issues, sorry. Uh, those are the two things that are generally needed for managing sprints and organizing the backlog. And so if we look at what that looks like, what you're generally going to have set up with that sort of a, a setup is that each permission will only have a single role assigned to it. And then the people page for the project, what you will end up doing is you will give each group or individual users, if you do have a couple of those in there, uh, as many roles as they need to get all of the permissions they need to do their work. Um, so for instance, me being the administrator, I would obviously need uh, the user's role in order to browse the project in addition to the administrator's role in order to be the project administrator. Um, neither one of these options for setting things up is wrong. It just depends on how you think about permissions. Um, personally, I like to tailor it depending on the type of uh, users that are going to be using the project. Um, I am a full administrator, but I generally like to allow the project admins um, to handle the group membership of their own projects as much as possible. So I really talk to the project administrators and try and understand what makes most sense to them and will set up the scheme depending on uh, how they want to work. That's my personal opinion. Um, it, there is no right or wrong way on how you think about permissions. Just as long as you try and make things easy for you easy for your project administrators, and also easy for your users to understand when they say, I can't do 
managing sprints. I can't create, I can't close sprints. Uh, and you say, well, you need the Scrum Master's role. That's something that makes sense to them. Um, that's something that also makes sense to your project administrators. So just looking at sort of a project here, we've got my dev work project. Um, you know, I have the hierarchy set up here. Um, that's what I'm showing off here where we have our administrators group assigned to the administrators role. Um, our Jira admins is the developers and our work management users is the users group. If I were to be set up, setting things up under the scheme of the um, uh, specific roles for specific permissions, my administrators would just need to have the users role added. And then you'd see that there's multiple roles there at any point in time. You can always come and check what roles you have to make sure that you understand what roles are assigned to your various groups. Um, as I said from the beginning, this is the way I have set things up to make it easier for me. Um, I have done this across a few companies now. Um, this is something that uh, most people have uh, found to be very helpful in understanding the permission setup, as well as making things easy on a maintenance perspective. Um, I hope this is something that has been helpful for you. I know it's been a lot of information. If you have questions about this, feel free to ask them in the comments of this video, or feel free to go to community.atlassian.com where the article is. There will be a link to the article in the description. Feel free to add comments there. I am happy to answer questions. I would love any uh, critical feedback that you have. If there's any flaws you see in my logic, um, I would love to have a discussion about that to try and make things a little bit better. Um, so I hope this has been something that has been insightful for you. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. I release new videos every Tuesday. If there's a topic you'd like me to cover, please leave it below in the comments. I'm happy to consider it for the future. And thanks for stopping by.